Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Salty Sea. I am your host, Tony, and today we are proudly joined by Lawrence, who is um, a rapper out of, um, where are you from now, Lawrence? So I'm from Tacoma Park, Maryland. Um, I'm pretty, pretty much based out of the D.C. area, D.M.V. area. Okay, so um, are you like close to D.C. or are you um, outside I'm about, of... I'm about 30 minutes outside of D.C. Okay, and you go by the name Lost Angel of Havoc. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. Now, uh, how long have you been going by that name? So I've been going by Lost Angel by itself like the entire 13 years I've been doing music. Okay. Um, I attached the of Havoc um, when we formed Havoc. Well, I think like a, about a year after we started like really putting out music and stuff like that. Um, it was my idea because um, I figured just kind of like, you know, you see other groups like... Um, Basically, Bone Thugs and Harmony, which is like how we met. We met on a uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony forum. Okay. Um, you know how like you have Crazy Bone, Busy Bone, Lazy Bone, and stuff like that. So like you know, it's always like that connection back to Bone Thugs and Harmony as a whole. So I felt like we needed to do that because me personally, I I do a lot of work outside of Havoc, and I wanted to make sure that people, when they were would associate Lost Angel, they would always associate that back with Havoc and stuff. Okay. So I was like, well, anytime we do something, we should always add the of Havoc. So like if it's like me on something, you'll you know it's like such and such featuring Lost Angel of Havoc or you know Rain does something, it's Rain of Havoc, you know, and so on and so forth. Okay, so how many members are in the Havoc uh, group? So Havoc is composed of four members. Okay, and so, have you guys performed all live together before? Uh, yes, we have. Okay. We performed, we performed for the first time live in uh, 2010. And how'd that go? Huh? How did that go? Oh, it was live. Like, yeah. Was, yeah. It was, it was a dope experience, man. Like, uh, we performed at, like, a battle of the bands, and, like, we were only one of, like, two hip-hop acts cool. and stuff like that. And uh, we went on about, like, midway through the night. And uh, I don't think anybody was really expecting what they heard. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember uh, Secrets uh, saying that, you know, after we had went on and stuff, uh, he had went to the bathroom and overheard some people talking and they were like, man, those guys are really good, but like, they had to be lip syncing oh. because we were just rapping so fast and stuff like that, you know? Oh, really? Oh, cool. How, um, now, I think I remember you saying you're not all around the same area. So when you did that concert, where did it go? Where'd you have to go to do that? Okay, so I was living in North Carolina at the time and that was around, you know, that was about three years after we had, we had all met. Um, and so basically, I had an op I had a show opportunity uh, company. Uh, I think it was called Gorilla Productions. Okay. They reached out to me on MySpace and stuff, and offered me to perform in this battle of the band. So I talked to my friend Ken, who was helping manage us at the time, and uh, he was pretty much, you know, handling a lot of the financial aspects and stuff. And so I reached out to him and told him about the show and stuff. And I was like, you know, um, this is what's on the plate right now. And he is like, well, hey. Do you think we could make it a Havoc show? And I was like, shit, I can ask. And so I asked the people I was in contact with, and they said that was fine, but they had already printed up and sent me tickets. Uh, so they basically had already had Lost Angel of Havoc on the tickets. So they they um, said it would still be fine for us to perform as a group and everything like that. It was just too late for them to go back and print up new tickets. Okay. Um, so basically after that, Ken went to work putting all the strings together and lining up everything like that with the rest of the members and stuff like that. You know, Ken was in Maryland and Secrets was here too, living in Germantown at the time. And he, um, he reached out to Secrets, Secrets was down. Um, you know, Rain was who was in Idaho and Stack was in Florida and stuff like that. Um, we all pretty much coordinated it together and stuff like that. And basically Stack came up from Florida and uh, I picked up Stack from the train station with my mom uh, the night before. Uh, I think it was like a. He came up a Friday night, and the show was on a Sunday, so he came up a Friday night, uh, the, that Friday, and then Ken and the others traveled down that Saturday. Rain basically flew into uh, BWI, and uh, Ken picked him up that morning, and then they. Oh uh, no, no, I take that back. Um, Rain missed his flight. Oh no. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was that. a bad time because Ken and the others basically were on their way down. And uh, so Rain had to get another flight and, and uh, came to Raleigh um, 
So by the time Rain actually got there, the rest of us had already met up and stuff like that in Raleigh and everything. And uh, we were all hanging out, of, out at a bar waiting for his flight to get in and stuff. And then uh, he called us and let us know that he was at the airport. So we went and picked them up. And that was the first time we had actually all been in the same place before. Okay. So that was exciting in itself. It was the first time any of us had actually met and interacted with Stack and stuff. Um, and then, you know, just for all of us to be in the same place, that was just fun and stuff like that. A lot of shenanigans and stuff and joking and shit. <laughs> cool. So um, over the 13 years you've been doing this, how many songs do you think you've come up with? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Some sort of astronomically high it's that number. high, huh? Yeah. And how many albums have you released? I've released um, 10 to 12 wow. albums. Cool. Um, some of them uh, some of them, just small EPs. Uh, I've got about seven full like LPs out. Um and then I'm working on, I guess we should say, my eighth full LP, um, Money, Sex, Music, Lies. And but in between that, like I've got, uh, I've got like a remix album, um, just the stuff I did over industry beats and stuff. Um, I got like a collection of some uh, tracks uh, and some originals called Shadow City. It was all like you know, horrorcore or, or dark theme stuff, you know. Cool. Um, cool. And then uh. Now, in the uh, rap game, I'm guessing there's people you basically can throw a rock and hit somebody and say that they can rap today. I mean, <laughs> what what um what do you think uh, puts you outside of the range of just like uh, everyday person who says he can rap? And what makes you think you're above those people? I make songs. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that is basically, you know, there's this like huge debate and stuff in the hip hop community and in the rap community, basically, where there's this argument of there being a difference between hip hop and rap. Okay. Um, hip hop itself is the lifestyle. Um, and that encompasses emceeing, uh, ciphering, break dancing, you know, you know, it's just like a whole thing. There's like so many elements to hip hop. Rap itself is part of hip hop culture in that it's one form of expression through hip hop. Okay. Um, but a lot of rappers today, you have rappers that actually just rap and then you have rappers that actually make songs. Okay. Um, the difference between just a rap as opposed to a song or whatever, I'd say is you know, you could you could put a lot of random shit together and make a rhyme. You know, you see it all the time with like, and and this is no, no shade because I actually like him. I, like Two Chains is a good example. Okay. You know I mean, um, he makes a lot of stuff. You know, where it might seem like the randomest combination of punchlines and metaphors and stuff like that, but the shit goes hard though. You know, what I mean, but you know, you might have a J. Cole or an Eminem or like, you know, like a Kendrick Lamar and stuff like that actually make like a whole song and you'll actually literally take in the whole lyrics and you literally just walked away hearing like a whole story and you gotten an experience, you know what I'm saying? And so I feel like when I make music, I aim to make a song. I want people to be able to walk away from anything I put out and feel like they've actually had an experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when you put out an album, do you find yourself making most of your songs like revolve around each other, like a concept album kind of deal? Or does every song you do kind of touch on something different? Uh, generally speaking, um, I like to have every song in the album kind of match a certain uh, I, I like to have the songs to have some sort of overall connection. Mm -hmm. I'd say the first, I'd say, album that I think I successfully did like one cohesive theme throughout uh, was my uh, last full solo project, Dorian Gray. Okay. Um, I was able to, uh, I, was actually, I was actually in the middle of making an entirely different album when I actually came up with the concept. Uh, um, I wrote the title track of Dorian Gray. And then after I wrote that song, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do with the album. So I had to like basically figure out what to do with the seven songs I had previously recorded. Um, and, you know, I kind of just pushed those to the side and um, just went whole hog into this new Dorian Gray idea. And basically what I did was I took uh, elements that, I, I took basically the story of Dorian Gray, um, which for those who aren't, aren't familiar is a story about uh, kind of like vanity. It's about a young guy who meets a painter and uh, he asks the painter to um, 
you know, make a portrait of him, and he paints this beautiful portrait of him and stuff like that. And then throughout the uh, during the story, Dorian Gray basically says that he wished that the portrait would age so that he could always retain his youthful beauty, beauty because everybody always remarked on how handsome he was and stuff like that. But then he realized that over time, you know, uh, just getting involved in shit that he would get him, himself involved in and stuff like that, the portrait not only did it age, but it would also absorb all of like his sins. So by the time the story had progressed all the way close to the end and stuff, the portrait itself had become this grotesque, uh, evil image of, you know, this monster. And I, I just love that idea. Um, so I basically took that concept and I, I changed it from being a portrait to like what I see in the mirror. And so basically it, it allowed me to explore my, um, my alter ego, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And so basically I wrote an album about me losing complete control and having that Phoenix alter ego take over it and what that experience would be like. And then you, you basically travel through the album as Phoenix into back into Lost Angel. And then the album culminates with those two personalities kind of merging in the music. How's the reception been on the new album? Oh man, Dorian Gray got so much great reception. And uh, I actually just did a show Friday night um, and I sold uh, a couple copies of wow, it. Cool. Because I, I had performed some stuff. And I hadn't performed some stuff from Dorian Gray in a while. I've been mostly doing newer stuff, but uh, people just love that album, and I'm really proud of the project. Um, I put a lot into it. Um, you know, I was really worried when I first wrote the first couple of songs because they kind of mirrored each other. They kind of they kind of created this framework for the album, and then I went to North Carolina, I met up with my friend Josh, and he, he had had a beat um, that I was able to use as, uh, as kind of like the... Uh, he produced a beat that I liked and I used it as an intro, but then he also had another beat uh, for this song called Fallen. And I basically was like, you know, you got to let me have that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I just took it and that became my descent track. And that's the track where, you know, you know, you hear the intro and then it goes right into Fallen. And then you just, you know, at the end of Fallen, you're like, okay, this is going to be a different type of experience. <laughs> cool deal. Cool deal. Um... Now, how much of the um, production work are you doing yourself? Do you have your own studio? Do you work at uh, another studio? Are you under, are you under a label? You know, um, what do you do with the like the the production val uh, uh, parts of it? So I am at all intents and purposes uh, independent. Okay. Um, as far as production goes, I do all of the uh, vocal end of things. Um, I record myself for the most part. I um. I do most of my own mixing and stuff. Okay. Um, I I get all, I get pretty much the large majority of my beats from SoundClick um, or SoundCloud. Um, I've been uh, working with a few friends uh, as far as production goes. My friend uh, Bernard, he uh, has been working with me uh, on this new album. Um, he produced he produced a song called Dirge, and um, I got another beat from him. And uh, we just kind of been talks. He's uh, working on the final mix and master of dirge and stuff like that cool uh, i've also gone to uh my friend trait razor studio and he's uh basically handled some sessions produced some sessions uh basically you know recorded me and everything we uh funny story we actually i actually went to record this one song called ghost in the machine and uh i had i had a whole different idea of how this song was going to go like just melody and everything like that and then trait was like no 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 we're gonna do something different oh. and so at every turn like he was like nah man do this like you know <laughs> so he, he basically produced the whole session sweet and it it came out the song came out so much better than i initially thought it was gonna be well that's awesome did do um you produce your own cds or and everything or do you have a marketing to like do you just sit there and burn cd after cd and say okay i'm gonna sell this one sell that one or do you have somebody <laughs> else mass produce them for you so I um I basically burn CDs when I can um you know just to keep costs down mm -hmm. um I going into the next album I've I've already planned to uh, get professional CDs pressed up just I like to have a professional package and stuff like that you know um, it looks nice when it's done so, professionally you know it looks really you. good um, thank you yeah I do all the, I do all the design myself mm -hmm. um, the graphic design uh, this uh, with money money sex music lies. Uh, 
my friend Monica's. Uh, I commissioned her to do the artwork, so I'm really excited to see what she's gonna come up with it. Oh, that's uh, Rodriguez, right? Monica yeah. Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah she's, she does her. some fantastic work. I've looked. Yeah, at some man. Of her yeah, stuff like and... I, I, you know, I had been talking to Scott for a while about like getting her to do something, like whether it be a logo or something. Yeah. Or something. And um, I was I reached out to her because initially I wanted to have like a nice little art piece to go with the album, like just something extra I can throw in like a pre-order package and stuff. Um, and then, you know, when I reached out to her for it and stuff like that, she, she told me her price for it and she said, you know, that would include everything. So I was like, well, fuck, I'll just have you design the whole CD art, Sweet. you know? And, yeah, no, you know. cause she's a very talented, art, um, artist, maybe Absolutely. someone that we'll look into maybe interviewing in the future because she does some very interesting stuff and you I, should. Uh, yeah, you should. definitely, definitely like to talk to her about where she gets her inspirations from and everything. Um, right. let's see here. Where do I want to go to next? Uh, so you're you're out there. You're doing your live shows. Mm -hmm. You've got you've been doing them lately. I saw a few clips from your Friday night show, and everything's going well there. Um, let's see. What do you got going on otherwise while you're not recording uh, music? You keeping busy otherwise? You having a lot of fun? Or are you doing <laughs> life? You know, I'm what are you doing? <laughs> what? This week has been the busiest week I've ever had. Oh, yeah? I've, um, I feel very, like, fortunate and blessed to, like, you know, have, you know, a nice amount of shows lined up, you know, between the last few months. Um, you know, I've got two coming up in June, um, and I'm just currently looking to book one more act for the one I have in two weeks uh, on June 4th. Okay. Um, What's the so biggest the venue you've ever played? Ooh, biggest venue I've played. Are you meaning solo or with Havoc or just in general? Whatever you think is the what what's, what do you think like uh, five thousand, ten thousand people, fifteen? I mean, what, how big are we talking? I'd say in terms of people actually there, probably Tacoma Station and um and uh Pure Lounge. As far as like the amount of people I've actually uh -huh. performed in front of. Largest venue. Uh, I did a show back in 2011 at uh, the Anne Arundel Fairgrounds. Okay. Um, it was a two, it was a, the 2011 jam for the animals put on by the uh, put on by Arf MD. Um, my wife Victoria actually helped set that up. She uh, found out that they were uh, looking to book artists for like this uh, event, and uh, she had booked me for that. So that was that was a nice little performance and stuff. Uh, I don't think as many people came out to that one as they they would have liked and stuff but um it was i had fun doing it you know it was a huge stage <laughs> sweet sweet um now i know you've put out a couple of music videos um how do you get put those together do you get a director and everything or are you just walking around with the camera and then just put beats to it by yourself is that all something you produce as well or so i can video edit a little bit mm -hmm. um, i'm still like learning how to like you know do like actual music video editing and stuff like that i've done like I, I added my my vlogs, you know, my Minute Monday sessions, my pieces of me's uh, and stuff. You know, I do that either through my phone or through my, um, you know, with my new camera and stuff. But uh, also, uh, when it comes to actual music video production, I always try to get a director. Um, Secrets of Havoc actually went to school for a film oh, cool. and everything. So when I have an idea, he's always the first person I hit up and stuff. He actually shot my Dorian Gray video. And uh, more recently, yeah. my tunnel vision video. Yeah, the and, Dorian Gray one was really nice. I, I enjoyed that one thoroughly. Thank you. How long did it take you to make that one? It took <laughs> us. Uh, it took us a couple of months just because uh, we shot the first section of it uh, over a weekend. Mm -hmm. But then it took us a couple of months to actually reconvene and do the last part because we we couldn't find a location for uh, the hanging scene. Oh yeah, yeah. So we had to like reconvene and stuff like that and I had to get that, get my hair rebraided and um, you know, thankfully like it passed. <laughs> yeah, uh, who was the guitar player in that video? The uh, His name is Kevin, Kevin? Uh, he was a friend of Secrets. Okay. And, uh, you know, Secrets, I, I basically, what happened was I played Secrets the song and Secrets literally his first words were, I want to hang you while you're <laughs> Um, and then he was like, I want to get somebody to, you know, I think I have somebody that can play the guitar riff because I think it would be really cool if we, we had just like a random guitarist in there and stuff. And he had this friend, you know, Kevin, and he reached out to him and stuff. And, uh, you know, I sent the track to Secrets and track, Secrets sent the track to him. And Kevin actually learned how to play 
the guitar parts in the song. So okay. when we filmed it, he would actually be hitting the right chords and stuff like that for when Secrets went back to edit it. And it just came out awesome. Yeah, it looks really that, good. So he wasn't the original guitarist in the song, though. He was just there no. for the, the music. Now, the, the uh, for the video, I mean. Um, right. So the guitar riff in that song, that was just part of the beat that you put to it? Or did who, who actually did that part? So Cinema uh, Cinema Beats uh, produced the beat. Okay. Um, I, I bought the lease for it. Um, okay. Cinema Beats is a producer on SoundClick and stuff. And uh, um, I'm fairly sure he's got like some actual professional um, accolades and stuff like that. Um, I don't know any offhand and stuff like that. But he's one of my go-tos on SoundClick. I got a couple of go-to producers and stuff that I've used over the, over the years. It's just... The, the the type of beats they make versus the you know and my sound you know it's just always been perfect because I got like a more alternative sound and you know I like the vibe a little bit yeah um, but I also like to be different so I, it's just pretty much a handful of producers I always end up going back to sweet um so stay tuned after the interview we're gonna play the Dorian Gray video so you guys haven't seen it yet we're gonna add it on here and you guys can watch it and see what you think and um, I mean, go out and if you can find a copy of this album, I recommend you get it because it's a pretty damn good album. Um, I guess finally, what I wanted to go into is what's the future look like for Los Angeles of Havoc? You know, what are we gonna, what are we talking about ten years down the road? You know, I mean, are you looking to do this forever, or is this is going to be a couple more albums and you're done? What's the plan here? There is no done. Okay, there is no done. <laughs> a done doesn't. A done for music with me doesn't exist. Okay. I, I, I honestly can't imagine what I would be doing with my life if I wasn't making music. I've actually okay. honestly thought about it. Like, you know, I've had some pretty dark moments where I was like, man, I'm just fuck this shit. Like, you know, just, <laughs> life has just been like, you know, you know, about three years ago, I had this conversation with Secrets, and this is before, like, life royally punched me in the face. But I told him, like, you know, my five-year goal at that point was to do my own show. Uh -huh. And, um... I'm into now going into promoting uh, my third show that I've booked. So, um, and that was that was three years ago. So I have no idea what my next five year plan is gonna be. Okay. Um, except for I want to be more serious, possibly uh, learning how to do my own tours. Uh, Ten years from now, I definitely want to be. You know, I would like this to be what I'm doing full time. How you old know, are you, you Lawrence? Know? Huh? How old are you, Lawrence? 29. Just 29. Turns. So you've got a couple of years to go yet. All right. So you're yeah. good there. Um, how was your presence on stage? Did you the first time you were up there? Did you freak out? Did you have any um, problems? My first, or? my first time performing, uh, I was it was it was a couple years ago. It was mm -hmm. uh, in 2006, uh, December, and it was the first time I met Secrets in person. And uh, my friend, uh, my friend Primo, he had uh, he had did a he had did a remix to a remix that me and Secrets had did. Um, and so we performed that together and stuff like that. And it was fun. Um, I did not nowhere near have any stage presence. I was just happy to be performing and stuff like that. Um, and it took me a while to like come out of my shell. Um, after uh, I did a couple of shows, uh, I did this, like the two live, two, three live performances with Havoc and stuff, including the one I originally told you about, mm -hmm. the first one we did together. And then, um, I did a couple of shows on my own uh, between 2010 and 2011, and uh, I had some really sh shifty experiences. Uh, learned some hard lessons, uh, and then I just stopped for a while because it never seemed like never seemed like anything was fair to me as an artist. You know, it was always like you know you got paid to get in, mm -hmm. you know, and then you got paid to get on stage. You know, just just stupid ass pay to play type situations which artists out there if you are a musician or performer do not allow anyone to charge you to perform mm. you know if you want to work out something to where you know you're selling tickets and you're keeping a percentage of the tickets after you sell a certain amount or something like that that's a much fairer deal or better still you know you sh you you know you're selling tickets you keep 50 percent of the ticket sales or you know, just re do some research, research, and try to get your get linked up with some artists in your area, and just put together your own show. It's not hard to rent a venue. Um, all it takes is just a little bit of professionalism. Um, after 2011, I didn't perform again until about. I didn't perform again. Ugh. Yeah, 
Why does it have the 2011? Anyway, it was a while. Yeah. Um, I didn't perform again until about two years ago. Okay. Um, by choice or just you had nothing to do live? I mean, well, I had a booking I think early 2012. Okay. Uh, I did that, and that was the first time I performed material from Dorian Gray, and I just focused on doing Dorian Gray and stuff. And after that. I just, I couldn't find anything that I felt like was a fair situation. Everything, mm. like I said, was always pay to plays and stuff. And I, I definitely wasn't doing that. I didn't have the budget for that. Um, you know, and I, something told me that, you know, it'd be much more worth it to just invest in the album. You know, I put all my own money into that, that Dorian Gray. Um, and so I just focused on that, you know, and selling copies of that. Um, and then two years ago, um, I'm like, pfft. me and Victoria, me and my wife, like, are, you know, pretty much hopping hotels and stuff like that or whatever, trying to find a place. You know, we were, uh, honestly, we were, like, homeless. We were, like, trying oh, to come shit. out of a bad situation. We were going through a lot of stuff. And uh, kind of nearing the end of our journey, you know, we, we were with Tony and um, we were, you know, making the best of a shitty situation. Mm -hmm. Um and this company I work with now a lot with shows, Afton and stuff, um, they reached out to me. They had finally gotten some DC locations and stuff, and that's where we were at, and they had reached out to me. And um, they had a show opportunity. And, you know, I looked at my wife and I was like, hey, do you, do you think I can do this? Like, I really need this. Like, you know, um, and my wife was like, yeah, book it. You know, let's do it. Let's see what we can do. Sweet. I sold 30 tickets. Oh, good. I only had to sell 20. Oh, uh, wow. That's awesome. I sold 30, and, uh, you know, a great deal of people came out to see me, and it was it was a nice little crowd, you know. And um, right before the show, we had actually finally found a place to live. Oh, nice. So everything culminated, every, everything lined up and stuff, and I, I, I've tried to be consistent. I've tried to consistently perform ever since. Sweet. Um, it's still a little rocky, you know, just because with Afton, uh, their thing is, you know, you got to sell a certain amount of tickets uh, to guarantee your slot, which, mm -hmm. again, it's, it's fine. You know, I, I often, I can get a solid 10 to 20 people out to a show right now. Um, it just really depends on what the, what day it is. Um, they usually have stuff on the weekend, so it's a little, it's a little bit easier to book. Um, also because I'm off with weekends, mm. uh, but, um, I always usually just buy all my tickets. I just buy 20, I pay for 20 yep. and then, uh, you know, I, I pay for 20 to guarantee my slot. That way I don't have to worry about that shit. And then, you know, I sell what I can make a little bit of my money back. And then, you know, the percentage with the percentage I get off my ticket sales, I usually either come really close or I just break even, but that's fair for me because, you know, I, you know, depend as long as it's not like a night where it's like twenty rappers and shit like that. I usually make out pretty good because again, I'm different. Yeah. Well, <laughs> People, I'm, I'm, a lot of times don't expect my sound. So um, I'm guessing. I know. You, I mean, you sound like you're doing this because you absolutely love it. So I mean, the money's not um, really why you're doing it for. But I'm guessing you have to make a living somehow off of this stuff. You know? Well. <sighs> The making a living is part of it, but also this shit's expensive, man. Oh, I bet. I would, like, I mean, uh, even, like, let's say I didn't have secrets, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Or let's say secrets doesn't like a particular video idea or whatever. Then I have to find a videographer. Your average video, if you want it to be good, is going to cost you around three to five hundred dollars. To Again, make a video. And that's if oh. you're getting a videographer that actually cares about what they do. Uh -huh. And, you know, they're going to make a dope edit. They're going to... um meet you at locations they're going to help with the treatment and stuff like that you know it's just depends you know uh photo shoots uh recording equipment <laughs> yeah so it's a it's a labor a of, of love it's a it's a huge financial investment mm. um that people should be aware of if they want to get into it um and it i cannot stress enough that if i did not love what i do i would be <laughs> so how the fans have been reacting? You got a nice little fan base down there in DC? Oh man, like um shit, the last two shows have been crazy, man. Oh, yeah? Like the the fans, the fans, the support has been incredible. Sweet. Um it's a little overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, but, and um, it's nice. It's nice because you know, coming from, you know, I have a, a, a pretty a pretty nice following online and stuff like that, but a lot of my fans are either all over the place uh, or overseas and stuff like that. Some of my biggest supporters are overseas. Oh, actually. really? Oh, cool. Um, so I, I have this uh, group I work with called Ripping Rhymes. Um, shout out to my homegirl, Chazzy, and her husband, Eric, who run that. 
Um, you know, and I, I work with them and uh, I help manage the team as far as artists we work with and stuff like that. But they pretty much handle all the business. I come in, you know, work with them on songs and stuff like that. And, you know, we get a nice reaction from that. Um, it's a very supportive environment. Uh, cool. so people should check them out too. Rippin' Rhymes. Uh, shouldn't be hard to find. Rippin' is spelled R-I-P-P-I-N, no G, and then Rhymes. Um, I can shoot you the links over to that. Yes, uh, um, yeah, so go ahead and, you know, so you got a Facebook page, you got a yep. Twitter page. Instagram, Instagram, all that. Instagram, you got all that. Um, you can pretty much find me on anywhere. any of those as Los Angel 2 k 5 Like, if you just hyperlink it, like, Facebook.com, Twitter.com, Instagram.com, all that Los Angel 2 k 5 even here on Skype, I'm Los Angel 2K5, so... And uh, Dor Dorian Gray is your latest album, or do you have anything else out Dorian Gray is the latest one. Okay. Um, and then I got, like, a ton of free downloads. Um, I, everything can be found at iculaters.com. Um, you know, I got most YouTube of my videos, videos, Music videos, um, People everything. People wanted to uh, buy uh, Los Angel Have Havoc merchandise. Where do they go? iculators.com iculators.com okay um, well I would I want to say thank you for spending the time to uh, answer my questions and I wish, time, you, wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors and um, thank you very much have a nice one man alright you too bro thank you bye bye take care Me in spite, 
and say he's all a lie Like they know my struggles, they wanna be Goliath But I'm no David, I'm the type to be inspired The game you throwing at me, I call it foul play Some be talking shit, but they miles away Wanna get to know me, but I am not your homie I got some trust issues, I run into many phonies From my back to be a friend to friends in need of friend in need and into peace, not everyone's a friend of me Weak and weary of the drama, I'ma give it all to Jesus Had a loss and where to start to try to pick up all the pieces Truthfully, I don't know where my life began to crumble It's so hard to stay afloat and even harder not to fumble I thank God for all my blessings, never thought I'd find the love All the brothers I always saw, these are my darkest thoughts I gotta get this off my chest before I fall apart can't take this pressure, all the stress is gonna stall my heart I'm in too deep, I've lost my way and now I've gone too far Wish I was the man you saw, these are my darkest thoughts I gotta get this off my chest before I fall apart Can't take this pressure, all the stress is gonna stall my heart I'm in too deep, I've lost my way and now I've gone too far Wish I was the man you saw, these are my darkest thoughts My last relationship She thought to call me heartless, thankful for the love I have I thought it not existed A shadow from my past becomes true love, think I'm resisting My motive now to do it, major, you can't break me That's my message to the competition So take heed, would love for someone to say they made me And try to take all the credit, but better with me Was taking the damage and made it without any help from my back Sometimes it take me back, I scars up and down my back Now tell me what you know about that